Hey you! Yeah, you. Have you ever wanted to be European? Then Mountain Blade is the game for you. Explore a huge landscape with warring factions. Interact with horrifically deformed characters. Horse. Mountain Blade has it all. Mountain Blade is a slice-of-life anime about the trials and tribulations of being a small chibi girl living in medieval Europe. Ooh woo. It was released in 2009 by Tales World Studios and is also Turkey's only major achievement in the last 50 years. In Mountain Dew, there's no main plotline. Instead, the Turks have granted you a sword to cut your own path, and you must create your own character and embark on a journey of quest completion, surf murder, and village pillaging. But before we do all that, we need to talk about the combat system. Moving in a direction while attacking causes you to attack from that direction, meaning that an enemy can block whichever direction you're attacking from and vice versa. However, ranged combat is a completely different story. I was wondering why I spent so much time lining up my crossbow shots only to have them launch as far as your mom's Ford Taurus that you sent over the shopping mall speed bump in a futile attempt to impress your friends, and it was only after accidentally sniping some poor surf in the jugular from 40 meters away that I realized that keeping your bow drawn until the right moment isn't how you get a more accurate shot. Instead, you need to find your target, draw back your bow, and ask your arrows very nicely to hit the target that's right in front of you. Pretty please, dear god, I only have a bow and I'm gonna fucking die if I don't kill this enemy. Please, please just hit him. Also, if you have a horse, you are god. It doesn't matter how many opponents you're facing or if all of your soldiers are dead. You could even be armed with nothing but a few strips of paper and a single rotting apple. Given enough time, you'll be able to commit enough drive-by murders to make Carmageddon shit its pants in fear and respect. You can also ram your horse straight into an enemy to knock them down, which is objectively very funny. Whenever I'm on the losing side of a battle and I feel that all is hopeless, I just remember the immortal words of the ancient Chinese general Sun Tzu. Always outnumbered, never outhorsed. When you create a new character, you're presented with an early 2000s internet personality quiz that tells you which NSYNC member you're most likely to marry. You then have the opportunity to subtly tweak your facial features until your character resembles a dead raccoon with a ponytail. My name is Ongo Gablogian, and due to unfortunate circumstances, I was born. <laughs> It wasn't easy being ugly. After my mother died upon seeing my horribly disfigured face, my father was forced to raise me instead. He saw an ugly monster as well, but I was his ugly monster. All the other children of the village hurled insults at me and called me horrible names, like Ugly McFartface and Jeb Bush. My father could only handle so much before he kicked me out. Apparently, having our house bombed multiple times a year was finally getting to him. I guess that's what I get for inheriting all of my parents' recessive genes. With a fire in my heart, a spring in my step, and a few extra chromosomes in my pocket, it's time for me to embark on my journey of self-acceptance, of friendship, and of power. Upon beginning my journey, I was immediately assaulted by a gang of looters, and armed with only a crossbow and a big stick, my ass was kicked. They took me as a slave and we walked in circles for a few days before I was finally able to escape. But it's okay, I just had kind of a rough start, but I've finally escaped their capture and now I can get through it as soon as I escaped from these other bandits that captured me while I was saying that. After that encounter, I realized that living on my own is no easy task, so I recruited a small army of villagers to split the rent with. I knew they only joined me out of fear that I'd eat their children or burn their religious idols, but I didn't care. It didn't really matter anyway, because after sending them to fight some wandering assholes for me, they died and I was sold into slavery yet again. I think I'm starting to notice a pattern here. After repeating the same vicious cycle a few dozen times, I was finally able to undertake a quest for one of the local lords, and after assuring him multiple times that I wasn't an ogre that managed to sneak my way into his castle, he asked me to use my incredibly pronounced nose to track somebody down. Anything for you, new best friend. I arrived at the town of Kulum, where the man was said to be hiding. However, something didn't seem right. Oh well, it's probably just a bit of culture shock. Not gonna let it ruin my day. Maybe it was the fact that everybody said the exact same thing when I questioned them about the man I was looking for. Or maybe it was the fact that one of the villagers offered me a glass of slightly off-colored milk upon my arrival. Wait a minute. This isn't Kulum at all. 
This is actually the deserted North Korean peace village of Kijongdong. I don't know how I ended up here, but I knew that I had to leave. Somebody once told me that I looked like Dennis Rodman, but I didn't want to risk it. On my way back from my quest, I decided to stop at another small village to buy some supplies and... God, fuck. After failing my quest and struggling to survive, owning nothing but the clothes on my back and the scurvy in my mouth, a local lord asked me to collect taxes from a nearby village, promising me three-fifths of whatever I could collect. This sounded simple enough, so I made the treacherous 20-foot journey to the village and began my job. The villagers cried out in objection, yelling things like, Taxation is theft! And, Hurry up and give that ugly man our money before he makes toast with the jelly from our eyeballs! But I simply turned a blind ear to their voices and continued. I had heard worse things from people I respected more. Using my newfound spoils as an official G-man, I bought a sword and began to exact my revenge on all those who had wronged me in my past, starting with any bandits that were unfortunate enough to cross my path. Against the setting sun, my horse and I sliced them up like salami on a fancy meat and cheese tray. But it wasn't enough. Spending this much time navigating the desolate wasteland that is medieval Europe has taught me many life lessons, and I realized that if I wanted to get anywhere on my own, I'd need to become a master of combat. I went to the slightly homoerotic fighting arena to test my combat skills against other sweaty shirtless men who shared the same passion for the sword as I did. As I defeated them one by one, I could feel my skill level rising. Or maybe that was my pee. As I limped out of the arena with sweat dripping off of my face, at least, I hope it was sweat, I caught wind of the tournament, a five round battle royale of epic proportions. Finally, a place for me to test my skills. However, the tournament was no easy task. Friends became foes, living became dead, man became horse. People were dying left and right, bodies littered the ground. Finally, the plague had arrived at Europe, and I was its messenger. Finally, after five daunting rounds of skillful blocking, team combat, and a little bit of horseback romance, I emerged victorious and about a thousand dollars richer. And what did I do with all of my newfound winnings? I did what any sane person would do and filled my inventory with horses. What can I say? I'm a simple man with simple pleasures, and now I am at peace. Overall, Mountain Blade gets a Mitsubishi Mirage out of 10. It's ugly, but it works. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna play some Red Dead Redemption. Well, shit.